11th lecture of mineralogy. We're still in the textbook on pages 131 to 134, going through the notation on how to describe faces to one another. This lecture won't have much notes, but it'll have a lot of examples because we're going to go through Miller indices. We're going to build on what we did last time and use the face intercepts to talk about mills. Typo. Miller indices. All right, this is the most universally accepted form of notation to describe face intercepts. If you'd like to put that, let's just say here, let's go universally accepted. Although I think the textbook technically says most universally accepted. The steps to do the Miller indices we're going to put down right here. And the first step that we have to do is we have to pick the unit face. This is going to be the frame of reference for all the other things. Now, what this means is most of the time here, we don't know the, uh, the unit cell. So let's just put a note to ourselves and say, we may not know unit cell. And then what we have to do is use the external morphology of oh, unit cell. So instead what we do is we use the external morphology to make our face assignments. And so what we do is we arbitrarily, this will make more sense to you in a minute, arbitrarily set distances of this one unit face that we like to one. The face tends to be the largest, tends to be a large front facing face. So if we had the, here's our crystal, we draw the cube a lot. We'll try not to draw the cube today. You know, we have our axes going through the crystal. We might say that this is our unit face and we make all the other measurements relative to that. The next thing we do is we're going to determine our intercepts. You know, it might work. It might work if we did an example at the same time that we wrote our notes. So let's do this. Let's skip one, two, three, four, five, six lines. And then down here, let's just go ahead and set up our example that we're going to base this on. We're going to set up a unit cell. Oh my gosh, draw straighter lines. There's our, there's our like, here's our lattice. We did this before. My lines were straighter. I'll forgive myself. Here's our center point, and we're going to put in a series of faces to worry about. We'll put in a face here, and we'll label it number one. We'll put in a face here, and we'll label it two. Let's do uh, face three down here, and then we'll do a diagonal face in purple. Yeah, I got it, and it'll come across like this. All right, so that'll be number four. And what we'll do is we're going to do each of the steps for each one of these. So we will have, so we'll have example number four here. We'll have example number one here. Uh, what other colors do we need? We need green. That's example number two. And we need our red color. That is our example number three. Okay, so we actually can do determine our, oh, what did I do? I didn't give myself the space. What a knucklehead. We have to determine our intercept distance. And we do this like we did last time. So here we go. Blue is number one. Our distance down here, well, in the A direction. Uh huh. And our B direction. So in our A direction, we have a distance of one. In our B direction, we're parallel, so we put infinity sign. In our C direction, we put infinity sign. Number two, our direction in A in A is infinity sign. B is one, C infinity sign. Three, ah, it's a twofer. So we have a two distance in the A direction. We have a, oh, and we can put those dots in, right? We can put those dots in here if you'd like to. I was just rushing. We're parallel to B and we're parallel to C. And then in our fourth example, oh, it's a dashed line. So we have a distance of one in A, 
We have a distance of 1 in B, and we have an infinity in C. Okay, so those are our first two steps. Now I'll do the rest of the work here, and I'll do the rest of the notes, I guess, below. Maybe you'll have it or better organized than that. Step three, we invert. Step four is clear the fractions. Let's go do those two steps. Okay, so do I need to keep doing this all in color? Sure I will. So we invert, so we go 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over infinity, red, 1 over 2, 1 over infinity, 1 over infinity, green, maybe you're even ahead of me now, so 1 over infinity, 1 over 1, 1 over infinity, and then finally in blue, we can do the same thing, 1 over 1, 1 over infinity, 1 over infinity. And if you wanted to, maybe over here you could say, you could say distance equals invert equals clear the fraction equals. Well, to clear the fraction, you just do the division. So that's 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over infinity is 0, 1 over infinity is 0. Green. 1 over infinity is 0, 1, 0. Clear the fraction. To do this, you need to multiply by 2x that whole thing. That gives you 2 times 1 half is 1. 2 times 0 is 0, 0. And then purple, clear the fraction, 1, 1, 0. And now we're almost done. We just need to figure out the symbology here. And so we'll scroll down here to our notes. And so our different symbols that we use. We put them in parentheses, put in parentheses. If it is negative, we put a hat on top. What we would do is, if it's a negative one, so a negative one gets displayed like this, and it's just read as, and we'd read that out loud to our colleagues as a minus one. And what other things should we say? If it's parallel, it's a zero. We already kind of did that, right? That is a zero. And then the last thing I guess I would put here is that if you are in the hexagonal system, there will actually be four numbers. Four numbers because you have the A1, the A2, the A3, and then finally the C. So if we were to finish off the answers here for this example, the Miller indices for the blue line will be 1, 0, 0. Green, 0, 1, 0. Notice how they're in parentheses with no commas. Red, 1, 0, 0. It's the same answer as red and blue are the same answer, even though one is an extra lattice step further away. That is correct. That's not a mistake. One, one, zero would be the answer for purple. So there's our answers for two dimensions. Let's move on to some three-dimensional work before we just uh, wrap this little mini lecture up. We will start here with the simplest three-dimensional example. Here is our C-axis. Here is our B-axis. Now, if there's a B plus, there also is going to be in this direction, the B minus. Here's our C plus axis. Here's our C minus axis. And then coming out of the board, right, in this direction, you've done this now many times, there's our A plus, and then our A minus goes back here. Now, let's say that our lattice is here. Okay, and we're kind of stepping out in these directions. And we have a crystal face, put it in purple, that connects from the second, right? This is the second. Here's one and two, and it also goes over here to one and two. So there is our face. If we were to walk through this, the first step is to establish the distance. The second step is to invert. The third step is to clear the fraction. And then the fourth is to put in the final answer. So let's do this together. The distance for A, B, and C 
is two, 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 right? Because we've counted out two steps along that. To invert this, we go one half, one half, one half. To clear the fraction, we need to multiply everything by two x. So that puts us as one, 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 giving us the answer of one, one, one. Those are our Miller indices for this face. It's that clear fraction step that tends to kind of be like that why stumbling block students ask. Uh, here's another example. Let's do a hexagonal crystal to experience that four. Um, all right, so let's draw a hexagonal crystal here in three dimensions. This will, of course, be hardest for me and easiest for you. And why? Oh, my gosh. And the reason why is because it's kind of hard to draw on this tablet if you haven't figured that out yet. It's not just because I'm insulting myself every single time, guys. All right, let's draw it like this comes down. There we go. This goes up. The bottom of the crystal. Now we need to probably draw in it in 3D. So we'll dot in the back side of the crystal. We can dot in the vertical lines here. And those connect down to there. And then we would draw in our axes. And so let's go ahead and put in our, that's our main center point. And from that main center point, we have the C axis vertical, C plus. And coming down is the C minus. Now where do the A, the B, and this, well, it's not that, right? With these, we get A1 equals A2, which equals A3, and they all have to be 120 degrees from one another. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in A1 shooting right through that crystal edge. There is A1 positive. A1 negative goes back like that. A2 comes off this way. A2 positive, and the negative side of A2 shoots back here. A2 minus. And then A3 has to be 120 degrees from that. So it shoots out to the back, A3 positive. And actually the negative side comes out here to the front, A3 negative. And so if the question at hand is, what are the Miller indices to communicate to your colleagues about this face right here, we would need to go through our, our problem, right? Which is to set up our distance. Dis, I'm glitching out. Distance. We gotta invert those distances. We gotta clear the fraction. And then provide the final Miller indices answer. So the distance is the key here. So on the distance of this face, A1 hits at 1. A2 never hits at all. It's parallel. A3, oh, that's the negative A3. See that? So this would be a minus 1. And then the C-axis is completely parallel. We invert. That goes 1 over 1, 1 over infinity, 1 over minus 1, and then 1 over infinity. Clear the fraction, it doesn't require anything special, it gives us 1, 0, minus 1, 0. Our final answer is 1, 0, minus 1, right? We put the hat on top, and 0. Now if you'd like to, go ahead and do this example on your own. Maybe pause the video. Sure, I'll tell you what the answer is. If you did work through it, the answer to that one would be 0, 1, minus 1, 0. And we can get good enough to be actually able to do this in pretty short order. Like, for example, we could draw a cube right now, but we've drawn a cube so many times, we're not going to draw any more cubes. Instead, let's go ahead and draw an octahedron. Have you? Can you draw an octahedron quickly? I probably cannot. So let's see, we go like this. We're drawing in the bottom half of the octahedron here. So, we go that, not too bad, certainly could be worse. This part here started worse. We put in our back side, connect it up, connect it down, and hopefully you get the idea that that is an octahedron. Hopefully on your own 
uh, notes, you drew it a little sharper and clearer than I did. Well, if we put in our axes here for octahedron, we would start here. We have our C positive going up. Now, really, this is an isometric crystal, so you could also consider that just A3, right? Because A1 equals A2, which equals A3 in the isometric system. This would be our C minus or our A3 minus. And in this example, I'm going to arbitrarily choose to put the A1 and the A2, or the A and the B, right? doesn't matter, through these corners. So we're going to put we'll say B positive, B negative, A positive, and this goes through the back, A negative. And then what we would need to do next is try to come up with the Miller indices for every single one of these. Now this face here is probably the easiest, and we'll go ahead and start with that. It intersects the C-axis at 1, it intersects the A-axis at 1, and the B-axis at 1. So this front face is 1, 1, 1. What about this face? All right, and this is the final bit of our lecture. What about this face? We'll color it in in red. It intersects A at 1, B at 1, C at minus 1. Well, it is 1, 1, minus 1. All right. Now let's go through and run through all the rest of the faces. This face here, we can actually just do this, 1, 1, 1 on every single one, and then decide which one hits negative. Well, this one hits B negative. Uh -huh. A, it hits positive. What about this face here? You put in a 1, 1, 1. It hits the C negative, and it also hits the B negative, the back side here. This is going to hit, there we go, 1, 1, 1. It hits A negative. It hits B negative. It hits C positive. This face back here, 1, 1, 1. A is, po A is negative. B is positive. C is positive. Okay, there's only two left. This back face back here. Now, if I lost you here, just go through it again and give it a shot. Okay, we put in the dotted line. Well, we put in our 1, 1, 1. We have A positive. Let's see. No, A negative. C negative. And then our last face is just this back one way back in here. And we put the symbology 1, 1, 1. We know C is negative. It's right back here. It's touching B negative. It's touching A negative. So that's A minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. All right. If that lost you, go to the textbook, check it out, try their examples. And if not, we can talk about via email or in class. See you later.